Welcome back to another Alpha Strike Battle Report. This is uh, a game that was played a couple of weeks ago between myself, Jesse, and Kevin. Uh, I was playing Zadaroth in Dark Legacy. Kevin was playing Children of the Dragon with Bethane 2. Um, so, going over the list here, my Zadaroth list was... This was actually the first game I'd played of Infernals since I played them last, which was before... Um, Regna, Allen, and all of them came out. Um, I actually sold the army off, and then I recently purchased them back. So, um, yeah, this was just to get to know all the stuff and see where they're at as a faction. Um, and Kevin's Bethaneless is—it's very fun. Um, it's got a lot of different ways to play um, with the angels and the archangel being able to dance around and then the archangel obviously is a really good gun platform now with the rate of fire change and the the damage um and then the blight archons in there with a rake just to take out some solo stuff and then use that um, crimson ballet for some sort of sprint and then the virtue hosts and the virtue champions are just really strong of course um all tar lots of targets for her feet and um yeah so let's um We'll jump in the game and take a look at deployment here and see how everything shakes out. So we rolled off and I had a plus one and I think Kevin rolled six and I rolled a three with my plus one. So um, he chose to go first, which is always terrifying against Legion. Um, he's. We both picked, I believe, the concealment objective um which wouldn't have mattered for most of our stuff um i picked it just because i wanted to have actually some sort of defense against the virtues because they do not have isle of sight obviously it wouldn't be effective against the beasts or any anything else um i think kevin chose this as well because the guns that i do have one of the guns that i have um being the gate can see through that obviously but the crows cannot so he he decided that was his best option as well so he's got a pretty symmetrical deployment there um except for the blight archon and the rake leaning more towards the um side with the objectives on this split decision um so i'm deploying here and trying to figure out where i need my stuff because like i said it's been a while um Infernals is definitely one of those factions that you want to know before you put them on the table. Um, and, I, and I knew, like, the main parts here. Um, I, I'm definitely not as comfortable in this video as I was um, in the recent past. But anyway, so I'm just um, setting everything up here. And I actually have two units of cultists, and I'm ambushing one. I found that that's pretty useful in games um some people think different and um I, I respect that as well i just think that it's it's nice um to have that flexibility rather than um have the extra support i think if i had a um, problem with them dying really fast i might um change that up so jumping into kevin's first turn here um he's just trying to take um, board space being going first to being legion of course uh one thing we i talked about long shadows we went through my models just so that we both knew more about them before the game and talked about long shadows and then i totally space it here whenever he's throwing some aoe's out with the virtues uh not super important um but definitely something that i want to call to attention that i that we both messed up um so that one clipping the gate go ahead and corrode the gate and just a couple more landing and Kevin asks if he was able to pop smoke before he did all that and I said that's totally fine the AOE's on the virtues that is he does the same thing on the other side um, and this one definitely would have been targeting crows that were in Zadaroth's Long Shadows range of 12. So he's looking for a charge lane here just to not be looking through that cloud. 
so as he's doing that um, basically we have as far as terrain goes in the right underneath the gate we had a piece of rubble and then above that is some water then a windswept forest you can see with the cotton balls there and then an obstruction on the right side of that circle zone coming down towards the bottom you see a forest a trench another obstruction and then a squall is the cloud looking effect with the bead on it so the virtue champion here just walks up on either side pop and smoke just to give them concealment for what matters now he's looking at where he's going to put his sorceress and hellion and he asks about the gate shot and then um does something pretty ballsy here i <laughs> Let's see if it pays off um, just to get the, the board space with the Sorcerers and Hellion that obviously can shut down shooting with Wind Ravager in later turns. This is a run here, so. Then he's taking a look. He's got his angels coming up behind the clouds. Actually, really like what Bethane does. Um, there, there's so much stuff I have I, I've looked at with her talking with Kevin that I don't know why people haven't tried it um, especially with the throne being in the themes she wants to be in so I mean essentially you could take a Azuriel on her or a um, an Angelius even and take a Seraph slipstream it up charge over people's stuff take all the free strikes transfer it to the throne so you got 30 some boxes extra to just take that and then you know if you get a sidestepping angel directly under caster with the flight ignoring intervening models for the charge um it, there could be some some weird stuff there um anyway so archangel moves up pretty aggressive um i should note that the crows prayed the archangel on this game um the thing comes up and I don't think she puts transmutation up on the bottom angel and then the succubus walks up <laughs> right, that six inches looks a little bit off actually there but that's fine he could have done this in a different order so the black blood archon puts up the um, dragon's blood I believe it is for the armor buff on the archangel and over to my first turn so roll for the souls on the gate I get three um, the gate takes a point of damage because the corrosive effect does not go out and I'm measuring the gunshot what can I get within 12 um, can't get the archangel because of flying high so that's gonna be a nine inch range but I can shoot at this sorcerers and hellion so if I have no other uses for my souls this turn I can try to take it out. I mean, I'm POW 14, it's armor 16, um, boosted shot, should kill it with eight boxes, so, on average, anyway. So I'm trying to decide, I, I've never played with crows either, um, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to utilize them, and I think, I, I think if we play this game, this match many, many times, I misplayed them. Um, and you'll see what I do here, here in a bit with them, but they're, they're pretty expensive for a jamming unit. Um, anyway, so I'm measuring 12 inch, uh, 10 inches, that is, to this front, um, virtue. Meanwhile, I am rolling to hit, boosting to hit, boosting damage on the, um, Sorceress and Hellion, and I don't kill it. Uh, leave it on two boxes with the first shot. So then I try to hard roll the uh, second shot, and I kill it. So it should have been dead, and it is dead. But um, got a little close there. I do not want that to live. Um, just another one of those things I can get in my back line. I mean, even with its spray, it could take out some cultists or force me to self -act, self sack them anyways which means i still lose them so that's not great so i run the arc node up the foreboder that is um on regna's or on zadaras battle group to within 10 inches of the bottom side um 
virtue hosts because I'm going to channel a rebuke over there. Um, Linda, another model I've never played with. I went up and just said minus to range because if the virtues come in, then that's gonna severely lim severely limit them, hopefully, and they can't run or charge. So let's see what happens. Now I'm just measuring the crows and I decide to jam. So I'm like, well, I don't want this archangel aiming. I don't want this archangel coming in and murdering my stuff if it wants to. So I'm going to jam and I'm not entirely sure this is right, but I have enough pieces that can take out the archangel um, with scything touch and my heavies. And I just decide that this is the best option in, in the game and maybe if i had more re, you know reps with the the unit i could i could utilize them a little better here i'm measuring 12 inches from the archangel if for some reason it, everything does get cleared will it be able to attack over this flag the answer is no so zadroth is gonna sit there divi Aros goes up makes her spell cost less I'm with harmonious and then Looking at some information on Zadaroth, I believe. Um, actually believe, because it hasn't come up in a long time, we're trying to figure out um, the target in concealment bonus um, as it pertains to the channeler versus the channeling, the channeling model versus the, the master. So I just boost. Uh, to hit that and so they are rebuked then I summon a tormentor on a wretch that ran a little bit earlier it comes in with one which I realized a little bit, which I put on a little bit later when I put the second one on from the hermit giving my caster or my master another one and then um, this was also just a flaw of not playing them in a while because I could have given my lamenter an extra essence but that's okay so regna walks up she brings in a lamenter because lamenters are awesome and she just repos I, I don't keep her um naked here with d cell because as even though d cell would be nice for my army i don't want her to just get trivially shot out shot out of there and lose my lamenter and her for future turns so I don't have to tithe first turn because of Dark Legacy's benefits, so it's over to Kevin's turn. I need <laughs> there I realized I forgot to activate my Tormentor that I summoned in, so Kevin was nice enough to let me change that. Pretty casual game here, so we have a couple things, of course, go back and forth. So here's Kevin measuring some charge threats from Virtue Host's unit, asking the melee threat on the the crows which is half inch which I don't I'm not a fan of I I mean it is what it is but so this one assault shot misses but can't deviate hits just kills this guy didn't even need the charge attack so that, that, that's to be expected I think their armor 11 or 12 um, another one charges in they pop their claws of course before they charge this one just directly hits and it dies I am getting souls from my own models. I'm not allowed to get souls from his models uh, from close proximity of the virtues, but I am able to get them from mine, so I'm getting these sweet, sweet souls from the, the gate here. And another dead crow. Now we're looking at the virtue champ. I talk about Kevin talks about assaulting there, and I say, you know, he's stealth. Um, probably not a great option. Plus the the line you're charging, you have to get within one inch. But we decide him ultimately it's not worth taking the shot, so he decides to run to the flag, which is very smart because I don't have a lot of models to throw away, and he's got a lot of a lot more over there. So Angel just comes up behind the clouds in the forest with the <laughs> pure buffs to the 
Angelius, I, I love those models. They're great now. Um, really strong pieces. So the rebuked unit of Virtue Hosts are just walking up. It actually became effective that Linda did her minus range. I tell Kevin, oh, yep, your range is minus five now to all my stuff within 12. And on that guy, at least. So he walks up, throws one at my, ch my foreboder. Then does some melee attacks. First attack miss, second attack hit. Some more crows die. So the crows are at least doing what they were um, intended to do, which was to get in the way. Now he's measuring out the what did we pause it just to make sure this is nice and clean. Um, stakes have never been lower, higher. Stakes never been higher. So the rake's gonna walk, jump. No, nope, he's not gonna do that. He would be out of control anyways, <laughs> even though it's long leashed. We talk about that. So he decides to go in on my channeler, which makes sense. The foreboder is pretty strong. If it's not engaged, I can do some funky stuff with black spot there. So, yep. Swings at the foreboder and we check the soul parasites, but it doesn't matter. He's dead. He never had a chance. The champion is just going to walk up the cloud. Blood Archon's taking a look at a spray here. What can he do? And the crows are ever dwindling. Except for the one that's right next to... Zadaroth and the Lamenter, which I forgot to move <laughs> last turn. So, that's fun. So now he's just taking a look. Trying to decide where his shots go on the Archangel, I believe. Yep. You get a little bit of long shadows and flying high fight here. But he has a lot more guns, so more relevant. Right here, chicken range again. And one of the things that we have discussed um, a bit is just time management here on Kevin's turn. He, he, he does things that he should be doing just um, when we're working on making sure we get things done a little quicker. So I decide to umbral. No, I, I decided not to umbro, I believe. Checking the range on the Tormentor is out. Um, I'm asking what all is activated. Am I going to umbro, yes or no? Decide not to. I like keeping umbrals when there are important sprays in the list or key turns for them to be used. I like to keep them for that. Um, so the thing walks up and as you can see, cat it pops his feet. So he's gonna, he's reading to make sure what models. And I should have caught this here. He does put a token for the feet on the Blight Archon. It is not living. It is not a valid target. Um, it's all good. It, it doesn't come into play. It's no spoiler. Um, but it shouldn't have been allowed so he could he would have just picked another virtue likely so um yeah so over to my turn two 
So my gate takes another point from the corrosion, and my, my plan this turn is to just take as much as I can while using my feet in a way that's going to just put me in a great spot for next turn. So um, Zadaroth's feet, plus three defense, and or plus two defense, and a dodge, which is great. Am I losing my mind? No, I have to check. I know you get a, a three inch place. But. Yeah, plus three defense. Yep. Yeah. And a two inch place. I am losing it. <laughs> a little bit too late. But anyway, so the plan is Scything Touch the model. Right to torment it into the Archangel. Hopefully get a couple in there. Um, or one in there this turn. And then keep him at bay and then have more heavies. Which is the Infernal's way. Um, after the feet turn. Which should be uh, unfortunately pretty bad for Kevin. Um, I, you know, I have the Lamenter there to Soul Parasite stuff. Just give it minus two to hit within five. Um, it's got dodge natively, so it can get <laughs> a five, um, yeah, five inch move, and then overall, and then um, the Soul Stalker has a decently high defense base. Um, so Alain, Alan, I think, um, walks up, curses the Archangel because it's defense 12 for some reason. Um, I don't want my Mat 6 horrors to miss it, which is pretty rough, but that's okay. So Alan just walks up, curses, repos back to the flag just in case my caster, my master wants to back up. So Zadaroth is going to get Harmonious, pop her feet, Scything Touch the Tormentor, and cast Rise of Torment. I feel it's fine doing it this turn, um, as far as casting rights, that is. Um, if... Kevin had played it in a way, like if, say I go uh, naked there, um, and then Kevin played it in a way that he wanted to go for it, he probably would have had like a, a chance to get my caster, to get my master scared anyways. Um, it shouldn't kill it because of the umbrals, but if he catches me off and pretends like he's not going for it and uses it on key things, if he played it a little differently, then maybe that could happen so so Zadaroth feet backs up outside of kill box my couple crows charge in they get corroded uh, they're dead to me now I forget to move the last remaining guy the sad soul of course um, I hit New day, do no damage. The other one misses. That's okay. This little Lamenter is going to try to kill one of these virtues because there's not a lot of like super light stuff to kill to get my rights triggers, but I get one. So Soul Stalker moves up three inches closer towards the Archangel. And I'm trying to. Like, I'm thinking, okay, I can get a couple here um, on this feet turn, but I actually switch gears a little bit on that. So, Orange Unit goes, gives some essence out, one of them smacks his buddy in the back of the head, get some souls on, or get a soul on Orange. Um, the gate places this Tormentor. I'm trying to decide, do I want to take shots? Yeah, sure, I'll take a shot at this uh, virtue. These virtues, their defensive stat line is insane. I don't understand it. But shoot one, kill one. Um, another Tormentor moves up. May not have been the, gress the greatest idea, but that's okay. It's happened. 
So this Tormentor is just going to charge, taking Corrosion. He's the Scything Touched one. Full on Essence. Let's see what you can get done, buddy. So Curse means I'm hitting easily. Charge Attack does a truckload. He takes it. Uh, another hit on the other initial. Um, Bethane takes that one, I believe. I forget that I have Chain Attack, so I would have got a free attack there. Oh well. Uh, I'm just buying down. I make sure I don't get the um, Lamenter's Essence mixed up. I do 5 damage exactly on that hit, I believe. So he transfers that to the Virtue Host, which just goes pop. Then I'm thinking, hmm. With all the other transfer targets and what they threat against me um, with my feet up, do I really want to put in more heavies into this? And I, I decide no. Um, I think I'm just going to play this out. And, and he's got a heavy in his face. He's got to do something about, obviously. And it's not going to be easy because of my feet. I did ambush the cultists this turn. They run up just to put a little bit of pressure, which. Spoiler alert on this one specifically. Um, Bethane's got a good gun, so we'll just leave it at that. I did not even know because I haven't played against her enough to know what her gun was. So they just clumped up and that's where they live. So I moved some stuff around. I popped the minus aura on Linda again. Tormentor engages the doggo and ship the turn i do my essence tithing while kevin's cleaning up because it's easy to forget so i have a, a ex extremely long turn there um which one of the things that's so hard about playing infernals is there's so many things to do but you got to do it all fast and like i said I, I i've gotten a lot quicker in my games now than on this one but you just gotta learn more so Kevin's feet goes away. He's trying to decide what to do here. Up keeps both spells. I think uh, Resourceful gives the super discounts to Bethane. One for Crimson Ballet. We're taking off some effects that have transpired or expired. Kevin brings out a five inch AOE. I'm like, what's that? Bethane's gun. Okay. So, those guys are dead. But that doesn't happen quite yet. Um, just taking a look at everything. Talking it out a little bit. Get a charge in here. Unfortunately, we talk about the stacking of my defense with the feet and soul parasites. And I think this is the assault shot that is taken care of. And then I do my movement stuff. I dodge in a place. His second initial goes in the back of a crow, which just explodes. Or his redirect charge, rather. Because he missed me with the assault shot. And I, I was import I was very disciplined to put the Lamenter outside of the corrosion field last turn so that he wouldn't get charge or a free boosts on there. Um, because that's that's a really good ability. So we're checking the one inch there on the Soul Stalker, the Virtues are charging into the gate and this cultist. Um, he hits the gate. I umbral. Which I don't know. I wasn't the smartest. I, I basically did it so that I would have um, another body for next turn. Um, just I didn't know if I'd get many chances. So the virtues going into the gate here. They get their two attacks, which are boosted, which is just insane. Um, I think he's off nine, though. Then the other one charged the...
cultists, I think, which I was a little confused on. Um, Kevin talks about how he would have popped clouds, which is fine. Then a little bit later, he says, oh, I couldn't do that because they have to be in the command range. But when he charged, they were in the command range. So that was good to go. I looked for a counter charge there just to see. It was the on the, the art, uh, Angelius. It was out of, out of range. So. so this is uh, very unfortunate here. The angel goes for a ch an attack. Um armor piercing attack and misses with mat six um, with my feet and the soul parasites against my tormentor and so I, I place out of the way of the archangel but still in the melee range of the angelis of course Kevin just opts to not take more attacks because um, he doesn't want to give me more places which I, I get and at this point like he's not tilted um, I mean, missing that role was pretty huge, unfortunate for him. Um, but he decides, you know what? I don't want to waste my time and give you more dodges. So he decides to move on. Then next is the angel on the bottom comes into this tormentor. Um, does a bunch of damage. I mean, that's where the way armor piercing works. Uh, then he's going to buy boost, or boost is second initial, and leaves him on a couple boxes. And then we remember that he's transmutation. He has transmutation up on it, so it dies. Armor piercing POW 16, and then a POW 16. So that that makes sense with the paper mache that infernals are made out of. Maybe that's the actual key to how summoning works. They send the Mark Soul to a factory to make more paper mache infernals horrors. And then they come back. So Dark Angel walks up here, uh, get in two inch reach of both of these guys. He's not going to get out of um, the Soul Parasite, so he might as well just get in there. He goes to swing on the Lamenter first. Because if he kills that, then Soul Parasites goes away. He misses. I dodge. Just out of 2 inch. Um, then I believe he misses... The Tormentor. I ask how many Fury he has out. Because I know how many Beth's on. Or... or how many he's going to be spending. Um, I dodge out of the melee. So he has no more, char no more attacks. Repo's back with Deceptively Mobile. Beth walks over. Shoots these Cultists. Blam, they're all dead. There's no sense. Dead, 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 dead. I think he rolled damage twice there. That's my fault. I was pointing. They never they never had a chance though. So next he's looking at his spells. Looking at what he needs to have. For Fury, with the beasts out. I believe he's asking about Regna. And, oh, he's psycho surgeries. That's right. He was thinking about doing a breath breath of corruption, I believe. Um, but I don't know. There. Oh, there must be a. No, I don't know. I don't know where he's going to do that. But anyway, he decides to psychosurgery. So, um, Blood Archon comes over here. Crimson Ballet is up. Comes over here and punks on a couple dudes and sprints back. And it's going to be over to my turn three. So, my feet did good. I, I appreciated it very much there. Um, could have been avoided by Kevin rolling. I think it was a six base mat so i'm a 14 yeah he needed an eight so he, no he needed a um higher than that because soul parasite so it goes down to a four so he needed a 10 so i guess he missed by a couple but 
I think if he kills that Tormentor, it's a little bit different in this scenario, of course. Um, I start. Umbral Guardian's going to charge this Virtue to deny the points. And I miss. At least he's not scoring that flag this turn, which he did last turn. Um, and he scored his flag, which was good. And then the break, obviously, denying my score. Um, so now I am re remembering to roll for the gate. Divieros walks up Harmonious's Regna. And then I have to figure out what I'm dealing with this doggo with. Um, Hermit goes over, pops some essence. I upkept Rights of Torment. Upkept Scything Touch. I did not upkeep Rebuke. This crow walks, because I remember I have him, walks in the back of the rake, gives him a little damage, and then repos into the arc, uh, the Angelis' way so that he's just one more thing in the way. The Lamenter walks over here, starts swinging. This Lamenter, um... Did pretty good, really, for for being the lesser with only uh, a little bit of essence. I, I just had to get him out of the way so that the Tormentor could get on the... Um, the Scything Touch Tormentor could get on the Archangel. So the Archangel and the Angelius are being tagged right now by Scything Touch, which is important. Um, Tormentor coming in. Pretty good roll there. 13, I believe. Um, just doing some damage. And he didn't have a lot of essence. Um, that I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. What, what's going to proc my road to, or my rights of torment so that I can maybe get in the back arc here of the Angelius because it's def 14 and that's eight, which is not not ideal. So I'm, I'm taking a look at that at this point. So Regna decides, all right, boss, I'll kill this rake for you. So boost to, da boost to hit, does a little bit, or does a good chunk, I should say. I mean, she's like POW 7 or something like that, isn't she? So she repos to be facing forward. Um, the mentor is not really that important to me right now anyway, so I'm fine with it. So, Zadaroth charges, boosting to hit, hits, and ki kills the rake. So that's going to be my rights trigger, which was great. Um, get that soul stalker in a spot where he's going to be able to walk. I believe I summon a Tormentor off of Roger here so that I can keep my... F yeah, so I can keep my essence. And then he comes in with one. I have the Harmonious on my caster, but I don't, my master, but I don't think I even end up using it because I just want to keep everything on her. Yep. Um, so then I take the... Oh, no, no, no. I started to write to Torment, my Tormentor, but remembered I used that Rites trigger on the Soulstalker. Soulstalker goes in the back of the Angelius and is punching on him, takes him out, and then I use that Rites trigger here in a second. Guess I don't. Okay. I don't remember what happened there, but this Tormentor, fully loaded, coming in. Charges for free. Rerolls some damages. Still have the Scything Touch tagging the Archangel. And last bot attack kills it. And then I write the Torment in. Which at this point 
uh, Kevin decides he wants to call the game. Um, I do notice that I, I put the essence from the the Lamenter onto that Tormentor, so he would be gone if I didn't get to him with some essence, which I wouldn't. Um, but Kevin decides to call the game there with his, his time. Um, and then just the fact that I have some horrors up there so I, I could I could allocate and get to his caster pretty easy with um I, I don't know exact I don't think it's like a, a good run or anything but I'm gonna be scoring my flag um I could at least kill his objective or go for his cast I'm, I'm not sure how everything would shake out there but he just said he just wants to call it um which sometimes happens when you get in one of those situations where you have a turn against a, a defensive feat and then you lose your gargantuan um, with so, such little time. So maybe he just wasn't mentally prepared for how he was going to adjust that. And and I, he hadn't... Yeah. Anyway, so um, it was a good game. There were some mistakes made on both sides and I can definitely say that I, I, I learned from the mistakes I made in this game. Um, Kevin's next game's his time management was better too. Um, obviously that was one of the things I discussed that I, I needed to work on after this one. And then just knowing my models more, I, I was more selective with the models that I did take. Um, I like Zadaroth as a master. I actually, I don't think she's my favorite though. Um, like she was when I, like I thought she was going to be whenever I picked up the faction again. So uh, anyway, I will be doing some more battle reports with them in the future and with infernos that is and we'll be fine-tuning lists and just trying to get the battle reps in so thank you guys for watching and um leave a like comment subscribe um any feedback is appreciated and i hope you guys enjoyed thanks